Hello my soccer universe, the international break is upon us and I hear your moans and goes oh I hope my favorite player is not getting injured, too many games blah 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 blah, stop it. The international break is the least of all the woes that are bestowed on our favorite game. I think the club game has to reduce their number of games, not the international game, there are only that many windows out there. Also. This is the one opportunity that you see big league players in smaller countries. It actually spreads it a little bit around. That's why I love the international break. In the last one, I got what Austria play Norway. In my hometown, I saw an Erling Haaland. Yes, he has played in Austria before, but this was the first time I actually saw him in person. It was great. This is what we need. Also, the Nations League is not a bogus competition. And I have to say it again. This is actually a way... It is not meant for the top teams, although it's great to have the big clashes where they play against each other, but it's mainly for the smaller teams to get level competition, not being beaten by your Spains, by your Germanys, by your Englands all the time by uh, scorelines of six or seven. That's not interesting. If you want to have actual development, this is a great competition to go for. And that's why I really like the Nations League. Again, this Nations League was not made for the big nations was made for the smaller nations and it's actually quite a welcome change that England yeah it was a weirdo outcome but England is in league B at the moment so you see the English England national team also play in smaller nations and struggling there to be honest because we know Greece have the inside track but again I really need to emphasize coming from a smaller nation that these international breaks are a big deal here I understand if it's not in England, in Spain, in Italy and so on, but here this is a big deal. And it's also what UEFA is for, you have to spread it all around a little bit. I also love that we actually see now games in different countries, because you know most of the time I only see games in at most eight countries that I'm watching. If you watch the Champions League, yes, you, it gets a little bit more diverse, but here, you know, how often do I see games played in Montenegro, for instance? So I am absolutely a proponent of not only the international break, international football, but also of this particular Nations League. And because I'm so excited about it, I would say let's remind ourselves where we are in the standings in each of the different league levels and what are the games we all watch out for. Let's start on the bottom, League D. In Group D1, we have Gibraltar having a slightest of margin over San Marino ahead of Liechtenstein. But this group is still wide open, especially since San Marino have two games. They play all of their opponents. Should they win out, they will qualify. However, San Marino don't win that many games. Whereas in Group D2, Moldova actually missed a big one by losing to Malta away from home, which actually keeps it rather open for them. Malta still have a chance. Andorra will actually decide how this group will go. So let's look into the final games. With a win in San Marino, Gibraltar can already qualify, whereas Moldova actually need to get something out of Andorra, most likely even a win, and then hoping that Malta don't beat Andorra by a whole lot. Should San Marino not lose against Gibraltar, a win in Liechtenstein will see them through. So that's actually quite interesting. And I have to say, I put quite some focus on League D more than I would put on League C, for instance. In League C, we have two groups that are more or less decided, where two that are relatively wide open. I mean, the most exciting was, of course, the shoot between Sweden and Slovakia, and they will have to meet now again. This is probably one of the games to watch in this upcoming break. Group C2 sees Romania more or less through. They will play Kosovo at home. A point will be enough for them because they already have one big in the Kosovo. However, the Kosovo also looking quite good in going into a playoff spot. Group C3 is probably the tightest one. However, Northern Ireland now have definitely an advantage with a 5-0 win against Bulgaria. Unfortunately, you know, I have ties to Bulgaria. But still, the group is relatively wide open. It doesn't mean that Northern Ireland will automatically go through. And then Northern Macedonia is already through and it's only for second place where Armenia should have the inside track. And so if you look at the upcoming matches, Saturday evening, Sweden, Slovakia, this is the one that you really have to pay attention to. We also have Romania against Kosovo. As I said, Romania can already qualify for League B in that one. And then, you know, this third group, Luxembourg, Bulgaria, Northern Ireland, Belarus, as I said, wide open. 
Luxembourg is the team that have been disappointing so far in there. I would argue that League B is probably the most interesting one at this very moment because we have three groups that are really open and one we have a straight shootout for first place. So let's go through it. Group B1, Czech Republic, Georgia, Albania, Ukraine. It's anyone's guess who will get through there. This is the most even group, really an exciting one. Group B2, Greece three points ahead of England. Major sensation, England may only end up in a playoff spot to go into League A, whereas Greece could qualify directly Definitely one to watch. Group B3, also wide open. We have three teams tied on top on seven points. Austria, of course, having this big win against Norway, also a big win against Kazakhstan. They have to go now to Kazakhstan. And I hope that Norway does not beat Slovenia. Then I think it looks good for Austria. And then Turkey and Wales is also two teams that gunning for the first spot, but it's more or less decided that one of those two will be promoted, most likely Turkey. And so here are the big matches in League B. We actually have Kazakhstan, Austria, as I said. Austria need to get at least a point and then hope that Norway doesn't beat Slovenia. Even if Norway should beat Slovenia, then Austria need to win. Then you have a straight shootout in Vienna against Slovenia. In Greece hosting England, that could already tell us a whole lot. A draw is already enough for Greece to qualify directly for League A because twice they might. It's head-to-head -head that decides it. Then we have Turkey against Wales, another pretty big one, and Georgia, Ukraine, Albania, Czech Republic. It's just the most exciting group of them all. While we get some big name fixtures in League A, I would argue that all of the groups are more or less pre-decided because it will not matter much whether you're first or second in a group. Yes, first place teams play second place teams, but we know already from the Euros, it doesn't necessarily mean all that much. But running through groups, Portugal already through, Croatia will most likely get second place. We have Italy, France, Belgium. That's a little bit more of an exciting one. However, Italy and France are both in a really good position. And I would even think that France might win their group. Although I would love if Italy could do so. Germany and the Netherlands also both are favored. Although the Dutch need to hold off the Hungarian threat. We'll see about that. And then Spain and Denmark. Yeah, this will be an interesting one, although I cannot see Spain not qualifying. And yeah, between Denmark and Serbia, it's theoretically possible, but Denmark seemed to be the stronger team. Maybe Switzerland can also try to avoid direct relegation to League B. And so it goes here. We have Belgium against Italy. This is actually a big match for Italy. I think they should get at least a point out there and then a high security match between France and Israel. Denmark hosts Spain. If Denmark want to win that group, they need to beat Spain. It looks more like a draw. Switzerland, Serbia, definitely a much higher stakes game. Croatia have to go to Scotland to get their points. And then we have Netherlands, Hungary. I think that's actually quite an interesting one. So this is where we are for this international break, at least for the first few fixtures. There's also World Cup qualifying going on in Asia and in South America. I will do my best to at least make a little bit of a summary of what we've seen in these groups so far, because they are actually quite far advanced already. And we are still awaiting the draw for the European qualification for the next World Cup. Although, you know, so many are qualifying. I'm actually not that looking forward much to the World Cup. I prefer the Nations League at the moment to this bloated World Cup, you know, but ask me in 26 in summer, I probably will be all in on that one. In any case, please let me know which games you'll be watching. What are your thoughts on the Nations League in general? Give me a thumbs up, enjoy this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!